Hi, I'm Ashley with Garden and Grace Florals. Hi, I'm Kimber, owner of Water Bear Photography. I met Kimber. I met Ashley years ago at a photo shoot and we never looked back. We were drawn to each other because of the unique and unusual art installations that we both do. Ashley with her florals and Kimber with her photography. Together we've had the incredible privilege of creating installations all over the world. All over the world. As moms and close friends, we both care deeply about each other, but also the small women-owned businesses and the communities that we work and live in. So come along with us as we navigate the challenges and rewards of creating extreme art for those who are brave enough to join us on the ride. So today I am so excited because I got a call from my good friend Brenda of the Florida Springs Council and she has an incredible opportunity where we can be part of a project to help save our Florida Springs. Hey Brenda. Hi, thanks so much for meeting with me. Anytime, what's going on? Uh, well, we've had a busy month doing a lot of things protecting the springs, you know, doing a lot of work with the agencies and other organizations. Um, but we've had something on our minds in the last month or so. I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, so one of the problems, as you know, facing uh, Florida Springs is uh, a decline in flow. You know, Florida has more springs than any other place on the planet. They're very special. Uh, but they are in danger because their flow is decreasing. Some springs are even disappearing. So what's causing that? The thing that has been on our mind is um, water bottling. Uh, companies will come in and take spring water directly from a spring because you can put spring water on the label if you take it directly from a spring, mm. um, which is a lot more marketable when you're in the grocery store. Spring water uh, looks like something that would be better for you. Healthy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what it does to that spring is it decreases that flow by as much as they're taking. So all of the ecosystem of that spring is impacted directly. Uh, you know, all of the animals, all of the, the life forms that, that require, you know, that flow are impacted. And unlike some of the other water uses, that, that are affecting the springs, this is one that individuals can have a direct impact on through their daily choices. I would like to create some way that will impact that person making that decision so you can know, have an image in their mind pop up of, oh yeah, I remember now that this decision is impacting a spring. That, that needs that water. And also it's impacting, um, you know, plastic that's entering our environment. Well, because plastic is truly forever. Absolutely. And uh, one part of this, this image that I want them to, to have um, just live in their minds is that just one bottling plant that's actually nearby, it affects this spring basin that we're in right now, that plant produces 6,000 plastic bottles per minute. Per minute? Per minute, 6,000 bottles, which is a very difficult number to sort of wrap your head around. It is. But if you could visualize it, um, the, the fact that there's all of this plastic entering the system that quickly and that it's affecting the spring, you know, so that's very difficult to, to communicate with just words. Absolutely. But a really impactful image, I think, could make a big difference. Awesome. I mean, my team and I would love to be part of this. I think that we can really come up with something for this project that's going to be unique. I want it to be beautiful, but also haunting. Yes, exactly. Something that will be memorable, but not not too disturbing or graphic. I'm thinking maybe something that's going to be more of an art piece that can really kind of serve as a reminder that here is the impact that humans are having on our water daily. And that when we are at the store, we can make better choices to keep that plastic out. Exactly. Awesome. That is exactly <laughs> what I had in mind. Well, I am so excited. I'm gonna make some calls because I think that there's some other amazing women that need to be involved in this project. If you have any guidelines, any other things that you're hoping to see for this project, dimensions for where you'd like displayed, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. please let me know and we will make sure that we're in compliance with it. But 
I think that this can be a really impactful ad campaign that will hopefully decrease at least North Florida and maybe other surrounding areas plastic use consumption. The Floridian Aquifer is one of Florida's most important natural resources. It is a vital component, not only to the journey of water through our beautiful state, but also key to the livelihood of the diverse flora and fauna that lives in and around the aquifer's spring basins and rivers. The Floridian Aquifer extends approximately 100,000 square miles underneath Florida's landscape, as well as beneath portions of the states around us. It is also one of the most productive aquifers in the world, with over a trillion gallons of water stored within it. There are over 1,000 springs throughout Florida, each teeming with life that relies on the aquifer's waters that exit through the springs and into Florida's rivers. Florida springs have been inhabited by wildlife for tens of thousands of years. From microfauna and flora such as algae, to keystone species such as alligators, otters, and manatees, a vast diversity of life relies on the Florida springs for their survival. Even humans have relied on the Floridian Aquifer and springs for centuries. From our historic Native Indian communities that relied on it for their livelihood, to local Floridians today who continue to use our greatest natural resource for their drinking water wells, food sources, and recreation. The commercialization of Florida spring water expanded to historic levels when bottling plants began in 1998. Permits issued to corporations generally limited the amount of water taken by the plants. However, the corporations have consistently and extraordinarily exceeded their permit limits year after year. Numerous spring-fed lakes and rivers have decreased in level and flow as a result, and there are several advocacy groups, including the FSC, who are in constant legal battles to scale back and stop the ever-increasing loss of Florida spring water to the natural environment. The bottling of spring water is disastrous to our planet, with estimated releases of 2.5 million tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere each year. Plastic is forever. It doesn't biodegrade and is generally discarded into our environment. It's estimated that 1.1 million marine creatures are killed each year by plastic water bottles that wash into our oceans. Brenda wants us to create some visually striking images for the FSC to use in an awareness campaign. They want us to deliver a series of images that shows not only the stunning beauty of our springs, but also alludes to the impact that bottling has upon them. Ashley is on her way over to the studio so I can tell her about this amazing project and so that we can brainstorm how to hit it out of the park for Brenda and the FSC and our springs. Hey Ashley. Hey. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure as always. So I got a really interesting visitor last week. It was Ooh. Brenda from the Florida Springs Council. Okay. I don't know okay. if you remember her. We've we've worked with her yes. on some things in the past. Yes. But Brenda came in and she asked if we would help with a new ad campaign for the Springs. Oh, that's awesome. So amazing. I thought this would okay. be really exciting and you were the first person I thought of for this. <laughs> so she wants to really kind of shine a spotlight on how the impact of bottling plastic water is impacting our springs. Yeah. And so she's tasked us mm -hmm. to come up, create a visual, like a visually striking ad campaign, bring it mm -hmm. to life okay. and shoot it and create the final project. Oh my gosh, I, you know I love a good challenge. <laughs> this will be fun. All right, so you're in? <laughs> I'm in. Okay, cool. <laughs> so my initial idea brainstorming session, it's just been sort of rolling around in the back of my mind, is what if we created a gown out of bottles that have been pulled from our springs? I love that. I mean, it has to be, right? We right? have to do something else. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge wow. for sure, but I just think okay. that that would be a really interesting visual to have a gown yes. made of the trash that's actually damaging our springs. I mean, what a story it, within that art. Right. I love that. So and, it'll be like yeah. a very striking visual, and I think we'll have this yes. beautiful model, this you know, ethereal images, but then clearly mm. have this sort of discordant yes. image where it, the trash clearly does not belong in this right. environment. Right. Okay. I, I love that. I mean, I think any way we can also incorporate, maybe we can make the bottles into flowers or floral oh, art somehow. I love that. I mean, you, okay. that's awesome. So I think that's that's going to be a challenge. It is. <laughs> so I think our first our first big hurdle is yeah. we need to find bottles. Okay, uh, yes. That's a lot of bottles that we're going to need to make a dress. Right. I don't even know how many, but we're yeah. going to need we're going to need a bunch. Yeah. Okay. So I think that is going to be our first challenge. And then next we're going to have to try to construct a gown. Right. Right. We could potentially use fishing line and wire to wire things through like a bodice, a fuller bodice mm -hmm. um, uh, or, or skirt <laughs> to I kind, flow down. Right. I was kind of imagining 
almost the shape of like the bell of a jellyfish. That's so cool. Give it really yeah. like almost an organic sort of feel love it. with it. Yes. My fear with the translucent bottles is initially I was thinking we would leave them clear so that it's almost like a jellyfish, but then I worry about them not showing up. Yeah, okay, in the water, good point. So right. what colors, per, to that point, what colors should we use, I guess, for this? Underwater knowing, you know, we're in the springs. I feel like that's a whole challenge. It really is. and. I think that our springs have these really, really, really beautiful azul blues, these emerald yeah. greens, these sand white. I think maybe what we should do is stick with a very natural color scheme. Okay. And I think that that might even help highlight how much this dress, this trash does love. not belong in our springs. I love that. So love we'll that. do a very, you know, very simple color scheme, mm -hmm. blending in with the environment around us, almost yeah. like a monochromatic yes. kind of image. I love but that. I think it will still be very visually striking. That's awesome. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right, and then I think the next big challenge is going to be once we get the bottles, we figure out how to color them appropriately, we figure out how to attach them to right. the gown. We also need to figure out how to make them into flowers and how to mm -hmm. make them look mm -hmm. good and realistic and organic because right. it's, they're, it's they're rigid plastic bottles. Trash after all, ultimately. Right. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, so we, we've got our work cut out for us. I agree, but you know we love, we do love a good challenge, we really <laughs> we, do. We, or, or do we just really like torture <laughs> ourselves? I think maybe that's actually it. <laughs> we've been asked to do it. So <laughs> It's a toss up, we love Brenda, we love our springs. Exactly. Let's, let's give it a go. Okay, sounds good. All right. For this project, Ashley and I decided that we needed about 300 plastic bottles to bring it to fruition. Why 300 bottles? I don't really know. It's just the number that sounded best to us and we decided we'd go from there. So I put out a call to my friends and family all on Facebook to see what we could gather within a week. Unfortunately, I came up very short. I think we were only able to garner about half a trash bag full of recycled bottles. So that's really good on us for caring about the environment and our decreased plastic use, but very bad for this project. So I reached out to another group called Our Santa Fe River. They actually go to a recycling plant and they were able to pull over 3,000 bottles off of the recycling belt. These bottles have been pulled from our rivers, from our springs, from all over here in Florida. And they graciously agreed to give us 300 for this project so that we can continue to bring awareness to the bottling issue here in North Central Florida. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the steps of how we're going to take these bottles from trash to couture. We're gonna start by cleaning the bottles out. As you can imagine, some of them are pretty grody. They've been some very questionable places. So we're gonna start with sanitation and then we're going to cut them in half, but typically about only the bottom two inches is really what we need. From there, we're going to attempt to make flowers out of each bottle. We're gonna do that by cutting slits around the edges and then shaping the petals. Next, we'll apply heat to hopefully give each flower an organic, unique shape to itself. We'll paint them and then figure out a way to apply it to a gown. I love how you guys incorporated this. Like, this is beautiful. Yeah, so the design here was definitely modeled after the waves of the sea. So I think being in the springs, this will be a really nice homage to that. So the idea is to have the darker blues centered, but then also kind of coming out almost to mimic the bell shape, but in a wave-like pattern. With the whites though on the sides to make sure we kind of give a visual effect of almost an ombre, but, but a little bit more organic, which I like. Um, and then even in the way that we uh, cut and did the mechanics of each of the flowers when we burned them into these shapes, each one truly is so unique. You can see some look like sunflowers, others like peonies or roses. So I like that there's that dimension in it too. So Kimber's biggest concern was making sure the fabric was on the panels. Okay. And I think the best way we're gonna manage that is to make sure we cut these out in trapezoid shapes. Otherwise, it's not gonna follow that bell mm -hmm. shape of the hoop skirt. So we can definitely just measure it out piece by piece. You know, if we do two or three sections, we'll just measure, cut one where it's pinned. So we'll pin it in like four or five different spots, cut, and then move to the next one, cut, 
And next one, but pinning it will be our biggest asset to make sure we get that right shape and then I'll start stitching. Awesome. And then that way too, I know Kimber's concern was just making sure the models can move in this, which Correct. of course you understand well too, yes. that, that you have to be able to move freely. <music> So it's looking pretty good, but before we get too much farther, I think we should probably hop in the water, test it out. Um, otherwise it would be very devastating if all of our hard work just goes down the drain. I would cry and move to another country. Into the skimmer, I guess would be yeah. the more appropriate uh, <laughs> well, thing. But so, all right, let's, let's give it a go and see how it works. It feels pretty okay. There are some that I feel like we need to go back and like kind of secure a little more. Mm -hmm. But so far it feels like it's staying on. The only okay. concern I have is on those looser petals on the flowers. So okay. we'll see. It looks like the skirt's sinking down too and staying put. Yeah, it, it's doing all right. I'm, I'm hesitantly optimistic. <laughs> like, we'll see how this the goes. The real test is gonna be at the spring. Yeah, with the current and all the, you know, hazards truly without eelgrass there. Yeah. That'll be dangerous. Exactly. It'll be a challenge, but I think what we can do is have, you know, the model get towed out. Yeah. And then we'll just sink pose, pop up. Especially on her back, I think that'll be the best way. So it doesn't mm -hmm. like pull on the flowers. And yeah. We don't want to risk littering in the spring itself. <laughs> that would be very counterintuitive to what we came to do. Exactly. <laughs> the flowers came off oh man yeah it looks like you lost at least three or four <laughs> no there's more down at the bottom <laughs> guess we're back to the drawing board yeah we'll have to restitch a lot of them if yeah. not all of them yeah we can't have that happening at the springs no it'd be counterproductive for sure <laughs> absolutely all right well Looks like I see some more sewing in our future. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Let's get warm. Yes. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Kimber. So I had to leave early with the kids. I'm so curious to hear how the pool test run went with the dress. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, there were a couple little issues. Oh, okay. The first one was that, as you know, Julie is a very experienced model. She was very gentle with the dress. But for some reason, as soon as we got in the water, huge chunks of the panels ripped out. They are literally in tatters. Oh she didn't kick them. They weren't snagged. We have no idea how it happened. Okay. Um, so that, these are all going to have to be ripped out, cut out, and yeah. re-sewn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can tell it's huge pieces. Yeah. So that was the big, that was one of our big hiccups. That was probably the most unexpected sure. thing that happened. Additionally, some of the flowers came off in the water. We okay. knew that that was a risk. Unfortunately, it happened. It happened. <laughs> okay. So the plus side is we found a workaround. The downside is that it's labor and time intensive to get them to stay on properly. Okay. Which time is definitely something we have a lot of. <laughs> I mean, don't we have like 48 hours? We need, we need to get this done quickly. We, okay. we are at, yeah, we, we are fastly approaching a deadline here. So we're going to have to restitch a lot of these. Okay. And then I would say the last unpleasant okay. surprise that we encountered, I'll, I'll twist our, our little friend Donatella around so that you can see, is that initially... I really loved how the hoop skirt had this open panel so that the model could move her legs. I felt that it would add safety and mobility. What I didn't anticipate with this project is that the weight of the bottles are now pulling it straight downward. It's almost even creating a concave shape yeah. and it's, it's losing the whole form of the dress. Yeah, you can see it. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so given that we have such little time um, to do this, 
Um, I mean, as far as structure, to give the front structure, what I would say we have to do is probably get another hoop skirt, right? And just reinforce it. We'll turn it around so that the model can be safe because I know that's your number one concern always. Yeah. It has to be. So we will just make it accordingly very quickly so that we can have the time. <laughs> for this shoot. Um, I will say Donatella looks amazing. I can't wait to see <laughs> She's how, coming along. how it looks um, again in the water, but um, that is so interesting that that started to go down like that. It okay. is, it is. Okay. And it's just one of those things that in a perfect world, I would get some boning and I would reconstruct it. But I think you're right. I think that since we are just on such a time crunch, the easier and quicker option okay. is going to be just add a second hoop skirt into the mix. Yep. We'll do a couple quick basting stitches to hold the two together and just get it through the shoot. Okay. In the meantime, I will help add lots of flowers, work on the headpiece, and we'll go from there. It's photo shoot day. It's also 4 a.m. and 40 degrees out, so not a time where I'm usually thrilled to be conscious, but I am incredibly excited to shoot today. I just hope that my team and I are able to accomplish everything that we've set out to do. All right, we made it to the springs on this brisk, chilly morning. This is a favorite spring of mine because of the lush vegetation, deep water, and all the local Florida inhabitants. Sometimes we even see gators and manatees here. But I see that our model Ashley just pulled up, so let's go show her the dress and get moving. Morning. Good morning. So I know I told you you're going to be wearing a piece of trash today. Yes. What are your thoughts? I. It's way better than I was expecting. <laughs> I'm glad. Yes. <laughs> this actually looks like I might not die in this. <laughs> that, that's also the goal. Yes, this is always the goal when shooting underwater. All right, no, well, it looks amazing. Yay. Oh my gosh. Hey Ashley. Hey. <laughs> this is the first time I'm seeing it like all together on the model. You look amazing. Thank you. I am so excited about this. It's this is coming together. I can't wait to see it in the water. Can I put the hairpiece on of you? Of course. Okay. <laughs> oh my <Okay>. god. Gorgeous. <laughs> let's try it out. Yeah. Let's Hope it holds together. Yeah, let's see how this goes. <laughs> So as artists, you know, we use our art to understand the world around us and create beauty in that world. Um, I personally also just love making a difference. I've worked with nonprofits for years as I've grown Garden and Grace, as I know Kimber does. She loves working with all kinds of conservation groups. And so for a project like this to bring those two things together for us, you know, for us to be able to use our art and then also bring meaning to something like water and the fragility of that resource. I mean, I think it doesn't get better than that. So, um, you know, this is a pretty great day at the office. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> absolutely. And I think that, I've, so I've, I didn't even know Springs existed up until about yeah. 13 years ago. And once I came here and I saw them with my own eyes, I just have never felt the same ever since. And honestly, if, if you like living, you should like the springs because they are the source of the majority of our drinking water. They sustain almost all life here. And they are truly just a magical resource that we should be expending everything that we can to protect them. So I love being part of raising awareness, teaching people about our springs, honoring those springs and keeping them healthy so that future generations have them. And when we get to create beautiful art in them and raise awareness, it's even better. So 
we are here at a local microbrewery. This is one of our favorite FSC hangouts and a great local hotspot. And we are going to reveal the images tonight to everybody who's part of the FSC and then some friends as well. So I cannot wait to see the reaction. This has been a lot of hard work on all of our parts and I'm really excited to see what they think. Kimber, they're gonna love these. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> Hey Brenda! Hello! Thanks for coming out. I'm so happy to see you. You too? Are you excited to see the photos? I can't wait. Let's do it! Alright, are you guys ready? Yeah. Yes! Alright, three, two, one! was some, some images that would make people stop and think, really catch their attention. And this just blows that out of the water. It's just amazing. Um, people will, will be caught by how beautiful these photographs are, but then as you look more closely at it and see the, the water bottles that, are, that, that make up her dress, um, we can we can let people know that the number of bottles that make up that dress come off of the conveyor belt of a bottling facility that's the number that's made every three seconds um, and so the just the the amount that that we are creating you know every three seconds every minute every hour every day uh, that's a huge impact on our planet and i think these these pictures what they do is draw people in with their beauty and then they're able to convey that message. I'm just beyond delighted. Well, I'm thrilled that Brenda loved these images. They're gorgeous and it means so much to me that she loves them. <laughs> I feel like it's a weight off my shoulders that this project is over, it's done, everyone's happy, no one died. <laughs> and that hopefully these will go on to make a huge impact for the FSC. They will. It's been a few days since we've showed the images to the FSC and they've already shared them at two other events. People have raved about them and it's starting great conversations about the effects of bottling on our springs.